Hey guys, welcome back to the channel. I am here with Secular Rarity. Hey, Secular Rarity, how you doing today? I'm great, man. It's good to it's good to be back. Um, I'm I'm happy you're you're out there again and chatting it up. And uh, yeah, man, we we've always we've always got fun things to talk about. So yeah, you were on the channel back when you were just Elliot. Yeah, and you you had it been on all these shows that you you've been on pretty much like every show now, haven't you? <laughs> there's you there's, <laughs> there's still a handful out there for sure uh, that I I haven't gotten on just yet. Um, but yeah, I do uh, I do regularly host over at uh, the Nonprofits, which is um, an atheist community of Austin show. Um, so definitely, if there's if there's anybody out there watching this in the future that doesn't hang out uh, with those people, a lot of really cool people there. Um, and uh, Your Friendly Neighborhood Atheist, they have a, a call-in show that uh, we talk about aliens and ghosts and, and God <laughs> and just anything in between. We, we had a Mothman call once, and that, oh, wow. was, that was just that was super, super fun. So uh, either of those channels, you can find me just screwing around and having a good time. So. All right. Today, we're going to be talking about kind of your story, your background, how you got to the, the worldview that you hold now. A secular worldview. Um, so, like, can you remember, like, what did you think of religion in general before you had kind of your paradigm shift? Yeah. What do you recall? From that so, time? I mean, I I grew up um, with religion, and it wasn't it wasn't particularly intense or fundamental or conservative or anything. I mean, both both of my parent parents were um, fairly liberal about it, but. The, the thing that was really consistent and clear was that, you know, everybody in the family believed in God. You know, everybody believed in the, the supernatural and the divine and the transcendent and all of those, all of those fun words. Um, right. And when I was in it, for me, the, the idea of looking at history was uh, kind of silly. Like, it, it, I didn't understand what, what history and the existence of of my God had anything to do with each other. You know, um, if we go out there and, and we, we dig up the ark or we don't, it doesn't matter. God, God's real and God cares about us and God loves us. And that, that's why still to this day, I think I often tell believers what I think is the most powerful argument is personal experience because there's nothing to argue against. Somebody just says, I had this thing that happened to me when I was 15 and I love God because of it. And you can't tell me that that didn't happen. And it's like, okay, well, that's the end of the discussion. If you want to go down a, a, an intense philosophical route, which is, which is fun and I, I love to do it, but it, if, if that's what you want to do to, to kind of, you know, bolster your your claim of this deity. In my opinion, you're you're always going to be on shakier grounding. Um, now, you know, again, that part of that is just because of my background, just being somebody that didn't really didn't really worry about the the minutia of you know harmonizing certain passages or anything. I mean, I I was like like nine or ten years old reading the whole Bible. You know, like, and I, and I think I got like, like three quarters of the way through it before, uh, you know, I put it down and, and over the years since I've gone back in different little, you know, spurts and stuff and read, you know, uh, Isaiah again, just all the way through for, for funsies. But, um, yeah, I, none of that stuff really, really bugged me. I didn't know any apologist name. I, I didn't know who you know, any, any young earth creationist or anything. It was, it was always just, well, I know God's real because I know God's real because I feel God's real because I feel God's real. And like, right. we didn't have, we didn't have to have more of a discussion. Um, and, you know, at this point, especially being so far away from it, having, having not held those beliefs for a very long time now, um, it's, it's hard for me to, to step back into that mindset for sure. Um, I get, I get where a lot of people are coming from. I, I understand, but it's, it's, it's hard for me to see it that way. It's like when somebody uh, just watches a movie and they're like, dude, this is one of the greatest movies I've ever seen. And you're like, I freaking hated that. <laughs> like that was, <laughs> right. like that was terrible writing. Are you kidding me? Uh, but yeah. <laughs> so. That's actually a pretty good, um, 
analogy. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> you think about it. Yeah, that, that kind of reminds me of my own past. I remember I did not look religion in the face very much at all. You know, it was kind of like part of culture, kind of there like air, you know, you kind of just assume that, yeah, there's something called a God that's kind of right. some kind of super thing that created things. You know, um, I just didn't think about it that much until I did. And then when I started studying it, you know, that's when I really got out of it. I, I find it funny. I like to think I went through kind of an intellectual awakening, enlightening back, enlightenment back when I started making music and I, I got really into like conscious music. Like I wouldn't listen to anything I consider like superficial pop or anything. Um, but it's funny, it was only about certain topics, right? And religion remained this thing that's kind of like, if you're a moral person or, or a serious person, you're religious in some way, right? Mm -hmm. And I just did not, I just simply, like so many people still, I did not know much about it, really, right? Yeah. And, and I us, remember like once comparing Genesis and evolution and thinking maybe they're both <laughs> somehow, you know, true. Yeah, somehow. Uh, like that. <laughs> but that's about it. Um, yeah, and, and, well, and us us being, you know, in the South, I, I mean, that's, how many how many billboards do you see, you know, telling you to you to pray today because you never know when the end's gonna thankfully, be. Thankfully, I don't have to get out of the house much anymore. Uh, that's good. That's very <laughs> but good. There's a lot I'm of sure if I did, <laughs> Yeah, I would see uh, definitely. I had somebody send me the other day this billboard in Georgia hmm. that says something about everybody will be will bow before his knee, even Democrats. And I'm like, wow. Yeah. <laughs> make sure to make sure to throw that in there. I don't remember yeah. what book of the Bible mentions political parties in the U.S., but <laughs> and politics is so interesting, isn't it? Because the yeah. Bible, you can, it has so many contradictions. You can literally like support mm -hmm. just about anything with it, mm -hmm. including any political position. And Absolutely. you would think you would think Jesus in totality would be more of a kind of like a social, you know, socialist. But you know, obviously in the U.S., the hardcore religionists are on the right. And they're Republicans. Yeah. So I'm not sure how that works. I guess most of them don't read it. They just listen to their pastors or the people they listen to. And uh, maybe they, you know, cite one or two, you know, verses here or there. Yeah. And that's enough. <laughs> yeah. I don't know. But um, before we get into politics a little bit, I do kind of want to get your, your political position and how that might relate to your religious or secular position. Um, what was uh what was it that kind of opened your eyes or set set you on the path of kind of rejecting the religious uh, worldview? Yeah, um, I think I think one of the things for me that that really started putting me down the path was just the simple fact that you know, like I said, ni neither of my parents really shoved religion down my throat or anything. Um, I was actually one of the last people to um, still go to the church uh, when the rest of my family kind of stopped going every Sunday and, and started going a little bit more sporadically. And the biggest thing that kept me there was playing music. I, I played in um, the handbell choir and I played drums and stuff. And, and that, that was something that kind of, you know, kept me there regularly. But there, there was an aspect to seeing kind of the back end side of it. Um, it's a little different when you just show up to the big church and the, the church I went to wasn't massive or anything, definitely wasn't a mega church. Um, but a good couple of hundred people, you know, would show up for, for each service and, you know, being, being able to walk into the sanctuary anywhere, um, and see the whole production is 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 just that it's it's a production it's a it's a theater it's a play and it's kind of like it would be it would be like getting to see the new uh tony award-winning musical but the way that you saw it was by watching the the rehearsals for the last like week or something you know it would it would just give you a totally different viewpoint of of where you're you know what you're talking about and what the experience is there. I don't think it I don't think it diminishes a lot of the 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 beauty and interest and coolness and whatever people you know or whatever fun insert word you can do right there. But it it definitely does give you a different feel when it's supposed to be 
all of this is supposed to be guided and directed and manipulated by um, some some entity of some kind that really, really cares what we say and do. And with that being the case, it's like, well, why do we need to practice? You know, why we're, of course we're going to get it right. Of course we're always going to be on beat because God's going to be there to watch us. Um, but, you know, that that kind of framework my you know as, as a child and and you know not having such a super fundamental you know uh, upbringing definitely was part of it but the other thing that then you know really propelled me down the route and is is what i give credit to a lot of things is was just simply having the question one day about why do we want to be good people you know why why should i why should I try to help somebody when I see that they're hurt? Or or why should I not try to hurt somebody? Um, and in doing so, you, you know, you very quickly come up to things like, you know, utilitarianism and deontological ethics and, you know, Aristotle. I mean, all the big right. guys, right? I mean, you know, going, going down that philosophical rabbit hole. Absolutely. Yeah. Absolutely. So that, so that was the key thing for you is morality. That was, yeah, that was a huge, it was a huge aspect of it. And, and just the, the, the actual interactions of, of what we do and why we do it to people. And, right. you know, how do you gauge what, what is a better action and a worse action? And as I, as I continued down that route, that, that was something that definitely made it less, less valuable to, to add in a deity. It, it, it wasn't necessary. I can get all of the answers that anybody that claims this is the right answer because, you know, God. Um, so so what is your answer? Um, so for me, I wrote a blog about this and I, I you know, morality can be difficult. Yeah. You don't have an easy answer for every mm -hmm. situation, right? Mm -hmm. um, but I broke it down to basically the foundations. It's kind of a, a sentence. I feel bad when I treat another poorly and they may treat me poorly if I treat them poorly. Yeah. And so the first part speaks to the fact that um, we have innate human empathy, right? We're social mm -hmm. creatures and also that we're interconnected and we, you know, we all affect each other. Mm -hmm. So that's kind of breaking it down to the core, to the fundamentals. And yeah. you're right. You don't need any kind of authority figure. And basically also authority is not morality, right? Mm -hmm. I mean, sure. divine mm -hmm. command. Yeah. You don't, need doing... to, you don't need to understand or reflect or anything to to do that. That's just, you know, might makes right. And doing where, things... where else do you see that called morality? Right, exactly, exactly. And and being being good simply because you're going to uh, be punished if you don't or receive a present at the end, that is also not, there's no way that that can be you know the 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 highest standard of morality there's no way we make laws we make laws based on that but to make that the 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 main thing yeah yeah it, well it's pretty selfish yeah and laws aren't laws aren't you know uh, completely moral right laws have right. a little bit of a different and i i think where you where you kind of come to with that sentence um you know is 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 almost almost 100% I think there's there's a little bit more to add into it because I, I think um, intentions are important, but they, they can't be the only thing. It can't be, you know, just simply the a priori aspect to why we do something. And it, and it just can't be the, the resulting consequences. I mean, the, the, these are the, the famous, you know, thought experiments we all have, right, where it's like, okay, well, if you're if you're in the Holocaust and and you're a citizen and and you're trying to, you know, make sure that that Jews aren't being being murdered, well, um, if you if you're hiding some and the Nazis come to you, what do you, what do you do? Do you lie to them? Do you tell them the truth? Like, what's the right answer? And based on you know just those two basic frameworks of the kind of you know Kantian approach to to what we do and the kind of consequentialist approach to what we do they they both present really bad problems but I think you can get around them by kind of mixing the two together and that's still a hard you know that that's still not completely fleshed out um, yeah. a, a lot of people have said it for for a really long time but two words difficult concept but well-being right well well-being is mm -hmm. is intensely 
valuable as an idea. And it's one that as I started to understand it more, um, I'm not positive that I have seen a system of morality that doesn't include well-being, at least in some aspect. My problem yeah. generally is just that if you're included, including well-being at all in your system of morality, then you have to include it in totality. And, and doing that would lead to to different answers more often than not you know again it, i do good things uh, as as a believer um in jesus not really because i want to do good things or that's like what christ said but, but i i get something at the end i get a, i get a present at the end of it and i get i get punishment if i don't do good things and that wanting of the present and avoidance of the punishment that's well being. I mean, that's 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 well being. That's or, or as Sam, Sam Harris put it, uh, the 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 flourishing of conscious creatures. Right. Is, is exactly. A good way to put it. Exactly. Um, and, and if you don't, if that's not the key part of your morality. I don't know, you know what. Yeah. What you could be talking about, except for just obedience to an authority. Right. And that's not really morality. Again. Yeah. So you that's know, I mean, you, you could lose your religion, right? And and if you base your morality on your religion, you just what do you do, right? Mm -hmm. But we're always going to be social animals amongst other social animals that have innate empathy that have to get along you know and and that's that, that's, that's the foundation yeah and that's that's a key part to it it's not just a it's not a singular um you know person in the forest by themselves i i think there is still there is still a discussion about whether or not morality should include life in general just biotic material across the board and there are a lot of people that have have wanted to expand you know where where we draw those lines i mean that's that's you know peter singer and and, and veganism right um and yeah, the, the animal right right to, yeah, yeah no 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 and i i think there's you know there there is a discussion to be had on on how broad you know how much life is actually considered in the in the you know calculation for morality but right. even still if if we if we just imagine right total silly hypothetical but one person standing on a rock in the middle of absolute vast empty space like there's no such thing as morality there's like there's nothing to interact with in a manner that would would you know matter i guess in that sense definitely that, that's why i say it comes down to human nature mm. to what we are not that it's any kind of metaphysical or intrinsic property of the universe. The universe is indifferent. Yeah. But as far as we go and any species that may be like us, that's just part of our nature. I mean, and you can't really get or ask. I get. I guess if you could say with with the God, this again, not really because there's a lot of problems with it. You can't get better a better foundation than that, really, right? It comes yeah. down to our nature, what I we think, are, right? I think a lot of people. When they hear that, they they misconstrue it, and they they want to add on um, that that divinity, that transcendence, and so forth. And I I don't think mm -hmm. that's at all where you're coming from. I think you're saying if we look at what a pine tree is, if we look at what what um, you know a house cat is, there there are certain attributes and there are certain characteristics of pretty much all of these things. And yeah, it's not to say that it's a hundred percent perfectly fleshed out down to every single bullet point and what whatnot. But we know certain things that bunny rabbits do that that definitely whales do not do, right? And and right, right. that's just part of who you know who and what they are. They, and they we don't are we don't know whale. right, and we don't know like everything regarding consciousness obviously exactly. and how that emerges and how <clears throat> conscious animals are for example mm -hmm. but we can we can do pretty good with humans we you know we can do a lot of testing we can do a lot of things and, and we can just you know keep going and do the best we can and it's right. still a very solid foundation right. um and the the thief dilemma i think is another good um philosophical oh, for sure point to make you know uh, plato made it well socrates via plato um, in, that, in that dialogue, you know, 2,500 years ago or so, you know, and um, some people have tried to, some apologists have said like, well, it's God's nature, but you could you do, do the same thing for his nature that you do for the other. Like, it's his nature, like, I, for, I forget how how they, uh, I, I read this in a book by Phil Zuckerman, um, what, is, what is morality or something like that. Basically, um, is God's nature, does he make it good because it's good? It, I, that's a separate thing or are you just talking about god's nature 
And if you're just talking about God's nature, then that's just an arbitrary, you're just talking about his nature. What does good mean right. still, right? If there is, right. if there is no separate thing to connect it to, then what are you talking about? Yeah. Right. Yeah. Um, and so, yeah, I think it's a very powerful, you know, argument against divine command, all of that. You know, you want reasons like too. It's another way to phrase it. You know, do, does God have good reasons for what he what his commands are? Right. Yep. If he doesn't, then except for just you know acting based on prudence, you know, trying to self interest, trying to keep yourself you know safe or whatever, then what are you talking about? Mm -hmm. <laughs> you know. Yeah. And that was always something that that and and still to this day, it's it's something that always really really you know trips me up, which is this this admission oftentimes of believers that they are fundamentally incapable from, from ever really understanding the mind of God in, in some form or fashion. And that, that is a massive, massive plot hole. Like, like mm -hmm. this is a problem y'all. Here's why. If you're saying that you, the, you know, God is some disembodied mind consciousness type thing, but but which your really makes no sense if you think about it. No, no, but this, we're this granting mind that. Just yeah. existing forever. And yeah, yeah. What space? What was he doing that. forever? Right, I mean, right, right. He decided to make an experiment one day. And, yeah, I mean, <laughs> but but it, it, if you can't understand that mind, like fundamentally, fundamentally incapable. Well, then how, how do you make any conclusions from that? You are granting from the beginning it is impossible for you to, to understand this and comprehend it. And then the very next words out of your mouth are, but I know what it wants. And it's like, do you, do you not see the, do you not see the problem there? It'd be like, it'd be like mm -hmm. somebody says, he says, Hey man, uh, I'm going to, I'm going to drive to the store, but I don't have a car. And you're right. like, oh, are you going to drive your car to the store? And they're like, yep, going to drive my car to the store, but I do not own a vehicle whatsoever. It's like, how do you how, how do you do that? <laughs> it, it, it's so obvious. I mean, we have all these different religions and, you know, none of them can agree. And then they have the same source material. <clears throat> Some, the, the same religion will have the same source material and have, mm -hmm. you know, a trillion sects. And I can't even believe there are so many sects of, like Christianity, but there are. Um so yeah, if we have this perfect message. Why and God would know that we are. He He know his how his creations are. Now they would act and get it wrong, but um, and people's salvation is at stake too. But he, he doesn't speak up. He didn't do it right to begin with, you know. Yeah, we could go on and on. I'm sure a lot yeah. of these things we we, <laughs> we, we talk into. about it forever. Did Did anything concerning like where did the universe come from influence your thinking at all? In terms of in terms of kind of my initial step away from from um, you know religious beliefs and and supernatural you know um, beliefs and so forth, not not then. Um, it became something that that was really fun um, to to play around with more um, as years went on, and and more so than than anything. I mean, just and it just a really just the nerd inside of me just is super always happy to hear about spacey stuff. Like, tell me anything you want to tell me about space and quarks and all that stuff. Love it. Love it. Love it. Love it. Yeah. May not understand it, but it is just fascinating. Um, it but, is, you know, I don't, I would recommend a book, uh, yeah. the big picture by Sean Carroll. Ooh. I think that's the, the best science book period that I've ever read. It goes through basically yeah, Carol is wonderful. every big category in science. Yeah, he is. He's very good. Um, and you read things like, you know, the universe does not need any help to exist. When we go to the most fundamental level of reality, there is no causes. There's not even time. It's that's just it's patterns. There's, there's no Aristotelian prime mover or sufficient, efficient cause. None of that. It's just patterns. You know, it's, it's quantum fields, basically. That's what our best science tells us. I mean, there, there are many, many gems in that book. I definitely would recommend it. Yeah, I've seen, I've seen a good bit of... Um good bit of talks and stuff from him but i i need to get some books i'm i'm so far behind man it's always terrible i'm always catching up on on another book it's like too many yeah. people writing things you know why are they doing that <laughs> were, were, were there any books that played a key role in, in your your thinking um i don't know if there was anything specific because a lot a lot of the stuff that 
um, when I started delving into, um, I mean, Immanuel Kant, for sure, a lot of his writings um, were really, really influential and, and helpful for getting me um, to, to at least start to open my mind and, and look at the world in that kind of perspective and, and really try to break down, you know, philosophy and, and the reasons behind things and so forth. But a lot of it I read online. A lot of it I was I was just lucky enough to be somebody that, you know, at the age of 13 had had, you know, pretty consistent enough access to the internet that I could spend four hours trolling through, you know, different websites and, and would find myself on, you know, stanford.edu or or Oxford this or this guy happens to be a professor at blah blah and here's what he says. Um, and so that, that was how a lot of it came to me. Um, mm -hmm. I, I did get, uh, I, I, I always love talking about this and, and you're, you're a music fan, so you'll enjoy it. But, um, Rush is, is still to this day, one of my most favorite bands. I love that those Canadian, uh, Canadian fools, they are, uh, an amazing, amazing group of people. I've seen them a few times. It's great stuff. Anyway, uh, a lot of their, I don't know uh, who that is. I'm so sorry. Oh, Rush. Oh my God. <laughs> Tom Sawyer. You know the song Tom Sawyer? Oh man, it's a prog rock band. You know, it, I, I might have heard it at some no point. Deal. I just, no big I'm deal. I'm making a connection right now. A yeah. lot of their a lot of their lyrics are very um, humanist and secular and non-religious, and okay. um, it's really it's really interesting. And and that was something too that that definitely I uh, I heard more and more you know songs out there, and I saw more and more you know, movies and, and people talking and so forth. Um, sure. read, read a good handful of stuff by Voltaire. Half of it was prescribed by the, um, you know, the school system. The other half was because <laughs> the teacher was like, hey, shut up leave me alone here's another book uh if you, if you start talking about the enlightenment i'll, I'll oh, definitely know, know everything know. you're talking about i know i know man. i know quite a bit about I had to bring it up yeah still to this day i i would say candide is is up there it's up there for me in terms of just like classics yeah. um you should also read definitely diderot diderot I know, is I, absolutely brilliant since since you and I connected uh, over a year ago, actually, I was just looking at uh, some of the awesome you know videos on your channel already, and and I it's it's been over a year since since you and I were hanging out and stuff, and since since you brought him up to me, he has a lot of fantastic fantastic stuff, um, mm -hmm. and just a really interesting character. And I was hearing about um, oh, I was watching a talk the other day on um, Epicurus and. Um, just just really fun stuff man it's just really nice to think that you know 1700 years ago there was some dude walking around just going i don't think a god did that guys <laughs> yeah it wasn't 1700 years ago but in the well, 1700s for... <laughs> yeah you said 1700 years ago yeah, not quite for, that long ago. <laughs> for for epicurus it was Oh, I thought you moved for Diderot. No, okay, no, yeah, no. I was, yeah, 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 I had, I had moved. Yeah, he was in, he was in the 1700s. Yeah, right. But. Also, also Dolbach is another one that you mm. know, definitely yeah. worth checking out. David Hume also. Mm -hmm. I would read his dialogues concerning natural religion. Yeah, he he makes a lot of good points in there, and he, you know, his character Philo goes through like these various examples of what the world could be, mm. and just. That a lot of people I don't think are really thinking about that you know hey guys maybe it's not as simple as there's some kind of god or not mm -hmm. and there could be different possibilities yeah and there's some proto evolutionary thought there too um, I've written about this a lot there's a lot of proto evolutionary well pre Darwin evolutionary thought um, Percy Bysshe Shelley is another one if you check out Rationality Rules mm -hmm. um, he did a video about him uh, it was it was really good so yeah. Yeah, there's a lot of good stuff out there. That's that's Definitely. one thing for sure. You know, if you if you want to, if you want to find a lot of people talking about a lot of good stuff, it's it's not terribly difficult anymore these days, which is great. You know, um, many but, many good many many plus yeah pluses and good uh, a good side to the internet. Yeah, for sure. You didn't know some, people there are <laughs> some some bummer some bummer aspects yeah. too. But <laughs> that's anything. That's definitely any technology, right? Absolutely, you, absolutely. Um, but when it comes to the universe, so I mean, we talk about whether there's something or nothing, or why is there something and, and not nothing. Mm -hmm. We don't even know that no, we don't know what nothing really is, and if it could even exist, right? Yeah. Um, 
And, think, you know, when you, when you answer it with God, all you're doing is shifting things to, to whatever the foundation or brute fact is, if there is such a thing as a brute fact or foundation, yeah. um, you know, the universe could have existed forever. And we, we have much more evidence for the universe than mm -hmm. God. And people don't even really know what they talk, what they're talking about when they talk about God, right? They're using a word and they don't really know exactly what they're talking about. They have some ideas, maybe a vague notion that some kind of mind created things. What are they talking about, really? You know? Yeah, it, um, it's it's difficult to have it's difficult to have the conversation in depth about about something if we just legitimately have no idea what what the characteristics are of it, and that doesn't mean that that you can't have at least some understandings, but. The, the idea of really being able to suss out, I think, either what what true nothingness, you know, in the in the philosophical or metaphysical sense, that and and a deity, a supernatural entity of some kind. The idea of doing that is 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 incredibly difficult. And I think I, I think the maximum amount of information we will ever uncover about these things is going to be always still incredibly limiting and and honestly unsatisfying and i think one of the reasons is because every conception of a god i've ever heard does not exist i do take that stance doesn't mean that there oh, yeah. can't doesn't mean it that interacts there can't with the be, world yeah 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 it doesn't mean that there can't be a god but i definitely haven't seen it something you could call a god yeah maybe. Yeah, and, and yeah. nothingness is kind of right there, too, and it may just be the case that neither of them exist absolutely whatsoever, no question, because maybe there just always does have to be something. I mean... Maybe it's a more know. natural state than nothing. Absolutely. Nothing is. Absolutely. Maybe nothing is just so... Uh, 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 the characteristics of nothing are just so uncontrollable and and chaotic yeah. that it will always result in something therefore i, I i'm not sure you know but right. like you said just positing my you know my particular viewpoint of this whatever nonsensical we can't figure it out fuzziness like that doesn't that doesn't help the conversation we don't we don't get anywhere yeah i would recommend reading um victor stinger he is a, uh, a physicist that passed a few years ago. He has a re really good book called The Fallacy of Fine-Tuning, for example. Ooh, yeah. Yeah, that goes into a lot of those details. Um, so, I mean, when we talk about getting something from nothing, on the quantum level, you know, we kind of get that. Mm -hmm. <laughs> we, you know, we have, like, anti-particles colliding and then reappearing from nothing, seemingly. Yeah. Um, uh, photons get get released and they and they disappear and come back. I forget. I mean, quantum physics is absolutely crazy. Oh, yeah, it gets and, um, nutty right away. Right from the beginning, it's just... It's very, <laughs> very nutty. But then we have quantum decoherence, so things behave as we expect them to when you get to larger scales, mm -hmm. you know. So it is fascinating, and the possibilities are, are much more interesting, and we're going to get to them faster if we don't have a bunch of dogma, yeah. you know, and God-colored glasses, you know, and predetermined conclusions guiding our our efforts yeah I definitely uh, they're agree. clearly just anthropomorphic projections yeah you know yeah. seems more likely to me for sure i mean yeah but hey i don't know maybe somebody did split the moon in half many a year ago maybe somebody did raise from the dead many a year ago <laughs> i'm pretty doubtful of it but uh i'll 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 read the proof if you got it so were there any um were there or are there any big challenges for you that maybe make you question your position on uh, your worldview? Um, I mean, I think, I think at this point, uh, a good bit of a, a, the bigger answers, uh, I'm not as, I'm not as terribly concerned about anymore, even if sometimes the answer just is like, nobody has an answer. Um, even if that is the case with like hard solipsism, like, okay, maybe, uh, they're like, well, you don't have an answer rarity. I'm like, ah, yep. You, you don't either. Uh, uh mm. so we're okay there. Um, heads up. Um, you, you used to be, you know, I think the first, um, podcast or whatever you ever did was with a guy named Pedro that's locally mm -hmm. with us. Mm -hmm. Uh, he has a podcast called Ask and Wonder. 
Um, did he ever say anything that, because he says some things to me when I talk with him that really all it did was make me be like, I, I can't believe you say this like that. <laughs> science, this, we don't get from science that the universe is indifferent. And like, yeah, you from statistics to all kinds of things, just you can, just general observation, unless you're going to do some real crazy elaborate gymnastics, mm. mental gymnastics. Um, yeah, the universe is indifferent. The yeah. universe itself. But so has he has he said anything that makes you be like, you know, do a double take and be like, you know, you got a good point. For sure. I, anytime uh, I have a good handful of uh, buddies that that are. Um very much still believers in in one shape or form one one stripe or another um and and uh i still i still hang out and chat with each one of them because we all still like each other and we we, we have you know really fun conversations and we love just kind of butting heads um and yeah I, I think one of the things uh pedro said once and i i told him about it afterwards it was it was great um but he said something about the myth of well-being he said we really we really need to we really need to, okay. to clamp down on the myth of well-being and i was like dude you and i are gonna have to, you and i are gonna have to grab some tacos and and sit down and just what what are you talking about man um so it it definitely would uh you know there's there's a lot of good stuff that that we've we've challenged each other on and and pushed back on and and that's what that's what you want you know you, you sure. want people that that don't agree with you a hundred percent. I agree. I mean, I, and you know what? I, I question myself all the time. It's kind mm -hmm. of become mm -hmm. uh, probably for you, you too. Uh, yeah. Part of my nature that like, you know, I want to make sure that I really turn things over in my mind and analyze things from every angle, you know, as best as I can. Yeah. It's um, a lot more, the things that I find myself changing on um these days are a lot more nuanced. Like I, I, it'll be very difficult in my opinion doesn't mean it can't happen of course i am open in the sense of you know as long as you can present something to me that that is demonstrable right as long as you can give me some actual evidence and it doesn't fall prey to all of the basic you know problems with evidence out there Fallacies, that people yeah. use yeah yeah that in and of itself but i mean there are so many other things that that, that could go wrong along the way too but like the 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 idea of an afterlife probably is I'm never going to have that again until the day that I uh, die and don't go to heaven. Um, <laughs> would, you, would, you, would you really want to go to heaven? I mean, not, it, not any version I've ever heard. Um, if your loved ones are burning forever and you're just worshiping this dude forever that's like obviously a total bastard and like yeah. the worst bastard in history. The only, <laughs> the only conception of like an afterlife that I felt, you know, at least okay with um was was the show the good place if you watch that that was a fun i enjoyed the crap out of that show there was a lot of philosophy and stuff and this uh but they they at the end of the whole show they kind of the characters you know obviously they're dads and they're in an afterlife and they kind of get to the good place is what it's called and but even even there there's still there's still so many so many problems with with you know just the the nature of it and the construction of it again even if you put all of that stuff correctly, even if every single I is dotted and every single T is crossed, and it, it doesn't matter because what we're missing is the indication. What we're missing is is the same understanding and reason to accept that toilets exist as heaven. Mm. And we don't have that. We have lots and lots and lots of information for bathrooms. We don't have that for heaven. And so accepting that there is that afterlife still for me is, is that's always going to be a huge hurdle. And I, I don't see currently what could, could possibly, you know, put me on the other side of that. But again, mm. I'm, I'm more than happy to, to look at anything people have I it's just, also that the accumulated knowledge of everything we know doesn't add up, <clears throat> excuse me doesn't add up to yeah. to that being where you yeah. what, what warrants belief right at the moment right there's a good quote i can't remember who who made it that um the things we find out from science just kind of we couldn't imagine them basically mm. but yeah something like heaven conforms to like our you know our easiest like imaginings of or longings right yeah. uh, with all the ease of a uh, or i forget how it goes like a Caribbean cruise, you know, it just, it's just there, what, what we would maybe want, 
but the findings of science are so often counterintuitive and we just couldn't even think them up really. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. So, and that's, uh, that's where Arthur C. Clarke says, you know, any sufficiently advanced form of, of technology is equivalent to magic. And it's, it's like, yeah, I mean, yeah, at that point, this is a miracle. What we're although, doing right now is a miracle, but right. You know, although you saw my talk with, with Dr. Carrier previously on this channel, he made a good point that, uh, probably that might seem to be the case on the surface level, but you, you dig down and maybe technology is always mechanical and magic is just something that happens and it has no, you know, logical or mechanical basis. It's just, just magic, you know? Well, yeah, that's always the, Maybe. that's always the possibility. It's just the indication of that, right? It's like, that's yeah. the same with God. It's like, you could always put, you can always fill magic and God and supernatural and ghosts and divine into the gap. But of course we all know what, what fallacy that is. Right. So it's like, yeah, I mean, true. You're right. It could be the case that in reality, Skype and, and Facebook Messenger don't actually do anything. And it's it's the the magic pixie fairies, whatever. Um, but yeah, it's most likely not the case. <laughs> well, I think we can go a long way to disproving that that theory mm. with Facebook and et cetera. Oh yeah, yeah. Um, there's some there's some decent enough corporate structure and, and technology. <laughs> yeah. I think I think those people kind of kind of could you could probably see on YouTube if you wanted to, like anything, you could look it up and see how it works. Yeah, yeah, the most, most things. Um, so to close here, um, what what do you think is your like the, the element of the universe that fascinates you the most? It's a question I've asked once or twice on my channel before. Just curious, like, is there a single thing, or maybe a couple things that really just kind of like blow your mind? Like, I I'm just fascinated by it. I don't, you know. Yeah. Um. I mean. Most recently, one of the things I've been trying to look more into is A theory versus B theory of time and try to try to. That's that's what I was going to say. I was going to give you mine. It's going gonna, it's gonna to be time. What is well, time? I'll pick, I'll pick another. Work? I'll okay. pick another. Uh, the, 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 you know, the Higgs field and the Higgs boson particle are um, so, there's so much to them. And, and there's still so much that I, I don't in any way, shape or form feel like I've even grasped fully. Whereas with other things, it's like, okay, like I, I can't build cars. I sure can't fix my car, but I, I have a decent enough understanding to, to really uh, uh, talk about some of the mechanisms. But when it comes to the idea of, of that, that fundamental of, of the fabric of the universe, it is still just so... I mean, the, the, I, I, I don't even have a great, the, the best way I have of describing it for anybody that's never heard about Higgs field and, and, and the Higgs boson particle, but basically the smallest of tiniest of possible existence of any entity being whatever, no charge, no mass, no spin, nada, nada, nada. And that is the, is the Higgs boson that kind of sits on this like, grid work pattern and collects and ultimately those collections warp space time give us gravity and it's still that's a terrible explanation that's a horrible explanation and and there is just so much more going on with it and from and it's I, everywhere from what i understand it gives matter its mass it's kind of like a that's the higgs boson and the higgs field is what right. it sticks to and that that sticking and clumping will ultimately warp that that grid pattern and that's what causes gravity is that warping of space time which mm -hmm. that leads you into time and what what the hell that is <laughs> and mm -hmm. and how do we understand that and how does that relate to to energy flipping back and forth between mass and mm -hmm. yeah i mean there there really are um there really are so many interesting things about about the universe and and none nah. of it to me none of it to me is is coming from a religious or supernatural understanding all of it comes from what is observable and testable um material physical that that just seems to be the case you guys and categorically ruling out anything or everything else is itself a fallacy and i'm okay with not doing that but you still don't get to say that those things that we haven't ruled out yet 
are the answer unless you have a reason to accept that answer, unless you have I indication. I think you're alluding to the black swan fallacy. <laughs> okay. What I think, uh, and I talked about, again, with Dr. Carrier about this, the, the, what is, what are you going to bet on? What is the horse that's won every race? You know, what has increased our understanding and our ability and transformed the whole world around us? You know, yeah. all you got to do when, when somebody questions science is say, you know, hey, look around you, literally like everything around you is the product of the efficacy of science. So yeah. and what what is religion uncovered in thousands of years? What is it? You know, it's going in circles, man. It's just there's a reason the arguments are the same. Yeah, it's it's because the the idea of progress is so so truncated from the beginning. You you are only allowed to progress up to a certain point at which you progress your way out of religion. <laughs> you reform your way out of belief, baby. Like you're right. done. You know. Um, and again, I, I'm happy to say maybe there is something, you know, we are so small in the universe. Mm. There could be many universes. There could be different things we don't know about. Yeah. And there might be something that you could maybe call a God, but it's not anything that humans have imagined so far. I don't think. I think that's not not any construction much. I've ever heard. Not right. any construction I've ever heard. Um yeah. Doesn't mean that it's not possible, but I, I feel really confident in saying there are enough problems with the understanding of Yahweh from the Bible. Or, right, or yeah. so those aren't everything, really everything is really probabilistic <laughs> if you're being honest. We we can't have one hundred percent certainty about uh, no. much of anything. No. And that's fine. We right. can be pretty certain based on everything we know. Right. So yeah. All right. Well, um, guess we're gonna end their secular rarity. Elliot, um, uh, you got any uh, any uh, events coming up or any um, appearances? Um, I'm sure I have one or two uh, scheduled in the next in the next couple of weeks. Uh, nothing right. nothing super super re close that's coming up. Again, the the places I'll I'll tell people to find me is your friendly neighborhood atheist. Um, and I, I can send you a link, man. And we'll, we can get that yeah. in the description and then. Um, the nonprofits. Those two channels are are wonderful, wonderful places that I I am just lucky enough that they put up with my crap and and yeah. ask me to come back. So <laughs> yeah, and I remember asking you for a long time, why are you not on Facebook? You're you're on Facebook now. <laughs> I am. You can find me I at Secular Rarity. Yeah, yeah. I think you're on so. Twitter. I am. I am. I I got all the things. I got all the. You things. got all the things I mean, now. I got a Discord. I mean, what? Are you, what are you going to do? The kids are coming up with all kinds of stuff. So <laughs> Yeah. All right, man. Well, thank you again for being on. Absolutely. Um, yeah, we'll see you out there. Take care. Time, foresight, paradigm. Fine, a foresight, paradigm. I'm foresight, paradigm. You fine, a foresight, paradigm. I fight for sight.